Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. This is so hello my living hole friends. I am <laughs> I am back for another everything travel nursing and you guys he's gonna squeal. Hi. Yes, I know, I know. So this is the love of my life. His name is Fitz. He is a Siamese and he is very angry. Very angry. I love you. I love you. Anyway, so he has been Yes, I know. He has been a little military brat. Here's your toy. Here. He loves balls of paper too. Where's your toy? <laughs> anyway, anyway. So Fitz is my is my fur baby. He is I say he's the love of my life. He is my child. And he has traveled with us for the past, I mean, since we started traveling. I rescued him when he was, hello. He knows I'm talking about him, that's why he's in here. I rescued him when he was very, very little and we waited about a year and a half until we traveled with him. And he's kind of our little military brat. And so he keeps coming. Yes, so we're gonna talk about you. Yeah, I know, I know. So we, we have been traveling with, he's traveled the entire time with us. And there are a lot of things that you can do to make your pet comfortable when you're traveling. It also affects your housing when you are a travel nurse. The first thing that I recommend is make sure you have a pre-vet visit and you have all of your shots, tags, everything that he's in good shape, he or she, your pet's in really good shape before you decide to travel. I also did a pre-car trip just a short one to Kevin's house before we had moved in together to see how he did in the car and he did really well. So make sure you have that pre-vet visit as well as you want to get an adequate car carrier for them. So he travels in style. He has a huge carrier that has his bed in it. It is his little travel home. And people look at me like I'm insane, but his comfort is so incredibly important to me as we travel because he has not asked to be carted around the United States. That is just what our lifestyle has turned into. And being a Siamese, he's also a little temperamental, but he has done an excellent job Oh yeah, I know. He has done an excellent job. You were just cranky today. I know. Okay. Yes. Yes, I know. So, okay, back on track. Okay. So alongside having a good carrier, you need to also ensure that as you're planning your route, wherever you're headed, you are making sure that your pet has adequate potty and adequate hydration. Sometimes they don't tolerate eating in the car. Fits especially, I put him in PO after midnight whenever we're traveling. Um, I'd only give him his water after midnight. And it does make for a long day, but he gets a little drooly and the initial, whether it's nerves or whether it's car sickness, the initial us pulling out, he's like, I don't like this. Within that, because we travel with him, we will not drive more than eight to 10 hours without stopping and resting because you get to go to the restroom throughout that travel time. You need to ensure that your pet is as comfortable. And he has done so well with that, that it's important for me to make sure that one, he's safe and two, just bodily functions for him, he's comfortable. The other thing when you're planning your route is you are going to be looking for pet friendly hotels. And so I pre-plan a lot of this. However, there was one occasion where I thought they were pet friendly and it turns out after we had checked in, signed all our paperwork, paid, they whipped out this piece of paper that said, uh, by the way, we're not pet friendly. It's a $300 fine. The good thing is we didn't get caught. However, we had already met like that eight and a half, almost nine hour drive rule for me. And so I took the chance of getting fined that much money to get him out of the car and make him comfortable. 
If you're traveling with a cat, you can on Amazon find little to go kitty litter boxes. Um, I specifically have one for travel that is soft shell. It's completely waterproof lined. So I can put a little bit of kitty litter in there with the little scoop and it's all contained in the car and I can slip it underneath. Um, I always clean, I always make sure it's fresh, nothing dirty inside the car. And so he has everything that he needs. I even go so far as to pack his Fitz bag, which is his overnight bag. If you think about it in the way of a baby bag, it's kind of the same thing. It has his food, his bowls, his faux box, as well as some anti-anxiety little drops and spray that I have to make him as comfortable as I can. We also, within his carrier, travel with a blanket that is specifically like a part of his home. It's his favorite um, bed blanket that lays on our bed that he sleeps on most often. And so if you travel with some remnants like that, it makes your pets transition into the new housing a lot easier. We've never had problems with him with going outside of his box or marking inside of um, any of the housing. However, there are sprays and different things that you can utilize if you find that your pet's either very anxious in marking or having a hard time transitioning. And all of this, you need to talk to your vet as well to make sure it's safe. So that kind of the actual travel aspect of it that hits on that. But I also ensure that within my travel paperwork, along with my ACLS, BLS, all my nursing information, our insurance information, I have his little kitty information. He has his own little pet medical file. He is the love of my life and I treat him like a family member. It's just really important that your pet is as much taken care of as you are. They didn't ask to travel. You're pulling them out of their own little environment. So make it as comfortable and as loving as you can within that process. Again, traveling with a pet is going to kind of complicate housing. You need to always make sure your housing is pet friendly. Sometimes there are breed restrictions when you're traveling with dogs. And I have found that certain areas you travel to, for example, if you travel to Palo Alto, the Silicon Valley area, they are not a pet friendly city. When you go to find housing versus pet friendly housing, your results, 80% of the market is pulled off the table if you're traveling with a pet. So you will find it's sometimes harder to find accommodations depending on the area that you are in. That is traveling with a pet in a nutshell. We've done it for a very long time. He's extremely trained, so much so when he sees his carrier and our luggage, he knows what's going on and I can tell he's like, all right, mom, where are we going? that the morning of we go to travel, I can snap my fingers and say, go potty, and he'll go use his litter box. That is the extent to which he is accommodated. And so one, I'm extremely proud of him, but two, that came with a lot of nurture and love and understanding that he is a cat and deserves a little bit more understanding as we travel and a little bit more TLC. So I hope that you guys treat your pets on that same level, but I hope that this helps you guys in traveling with a pet. You don't have to give up your pet in order to travel, but I hope that they travel well and it is not too traumatic on them. So he is a part of the family. I hope this helps guys and I will see you in the next one.